Um, so I've always been interested in nutrition. Okay, I shouldn't say always. I used to be overweight. I'm trying to remember when. Um, like I was overweight a lot of my high school on and off and then during my undergrad too. And then I, that's when I kind of realized that I needed to, you know, start eating healthier. Before that, I never used to think about food as like something I need to think about. Um, so I got into nutrition a long time ago, but I wasn't looking into the scientific literature then. I wasn't for the longest time, com to be completely honest. I was doing something that's often referred to as like the bro diet, which is like a lot of protein, <laughs> a tiny bit of broccoli, and then like rice or something. And that's what I was eating because that's what everyone around me was eating. And oh compared gosh. to where I had come from, which was mm. a lot of junk food and a lot of pop and things like mm. that, to me, that was like very healthy. Mm. It's all relative, right? Like, where do you come from? What were mm -hmm. you doing before? So for the longest time, I kept thinking I'm eating healthy. But I, I've had like a few health problems that made me always question, is my diet right? I have had migraines all my life. And I had mm. just, I was always told by my doctors that it's genetic. Um, cause, especially because my mom also has it. So mm. I, I never thought more than that. I would just sometimes take really strong pills that were given to me. I had cystic acne on my face and have tried like so many medications, Accutane five times and five and times, five times, five cycles. One is already like enough. So you can oh, imagine. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you don't mind yeah. prescribing it all over again if you get acne. So. <laughs> That's a that is a dry skin and the lips oh, and oh, the liver painful. potential toxicity. Wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Five times. I never knew they would actually do that for you. But yeah, okay. it was, it was pretty <laughs> bad. Um, cause it would get better and then I would be off Accutane and then it would come back because wow. I wasn't really changing what I'm eating. So it doesn't like, it doesn't surprise me. That's what was happening. Sure. Uh, so I had acne, I had migraines. I had, uh, something called like constant fatigue syndrome. Like I was always tired, needed a lot of caffeine throughout the day. And regardless of like my sleep, like my sleep, I always tried to sleep, but still needed a lot of coffee and stuff. And then I also had a bit of eczema and digestive issues. So I was always frustrated. I'm eating well, or what I thought was well. I'm exercising. I am like, you know, being active and sleeping well. Why do I have these problems? Like, shouldn't my body be like, okay, you're doing all the right things. And I'm young too. So it really bothered me. And I've tried all the fat diets um not going to lie before i actually looked into the scientific literature and um i had just kind of given up hope i uh, i remember one time i went this was during med school i went to the doctor he did a bunch of tests couldn't find anything wrong in the blood test and he told me that he wanted me to try ssris antidepressants mm -hmm. he's like i think your fatigue comes from depression but i'm like my mood is fine no one has told me that and i don't feel like i'm sad and he was like, yeah, but you know, it could be like underlying and you just don't know. Why don't we experiment? And that didn't feel right to me mm. to experiment with something so strong, yeah. especially when like, I haven't like, you know, if it was depression, I feel like I should have started with therapy, not like SSRIs. And so, at least be symptomatic of yeah, depression. <laughs> right. So that didn't sit well with me. And then around that same time is doing my cardiology block. One of the lectures I was sitting down and the cardiologists are talking about how children these days are getting plaques in their arteries by the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And that's it. He didn't like talk about why, like, is that bad? Is that good? Just more of a very factual statement. And then soon later, he was like, look at the person to your right and look at the person to your left. You looked at two people. One of them is going to get heart disease. And then he just moved on. Like, <laughs> And I was surprised that no one else questioned it either. Like I was just boggled. I was like, you told us something so big, 50% of my friends are going to get heart disease. Right. And then you're not going to tell me how to prevent it, how to change it. Is, <laughs> is that normal? It, like, like you, you just start telling me all the surgeries and statins and all the medications. And that, so the combination of those two things, I was like, you know what? Med school is great to learn what to do when people are sick. Um, but I want to learn how diet is involved in my own health in heart disease and all these things. And that's when I started looking into the scientific literature. And then I was astonished when I discovered everything. <laughs> I discovered all the studies, uh, all the work of like, you know, Dr. Esselstyn and um, all these amazing plant-based doctors, as well as about the blue zones. And 
I was just like, why do I not know this? Like I'm learning about heart disease and how come he hasn't even brought this up even for a second. And oh. that's when I was pretty much convinced that, you know what, I'm going to go plant-based. And... 